Donald Trump, would use the Justice Department as a weapon. That that is the single most dangerous thing that a president could do to the country on his own say so. Is that for life? That he gets to be president? Will we keep having more elections? In it. Rachel Maddow. She might have balls, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? And if you can believe it, Murderer's Row on Monday is way worse. Way, <laughs> way, way worse. Oh, yeah. uh, so on Tuesday, uh, MSNBC host Rachel Maddow, uh, this uh, person predicted that Trump would declare. And I guess we're going to play the full thing and pause and play because it's pretty long. It's but a lot of you saw that. And it, not that many people watch Maddow, just to be clear. <laughs> I mean, there are far more of you, there are far more of you in Mug Club uh, if you were to actually compare apples to apples. But... This is something that has been echoed, I've seen, by a lot of people on the left, right? They're, they're, they're trying to scare you into the idea that if Donald Trump is elected, he's going to you know, become a, a Putin or going to become a Kim Jong-il or Un, whichever one you prefer. I don't like either. Uh, here is Rachel Maddow talking about this from yesterday. The election means one of two things, if this is the way he's going to approach it. Either he loses the election and he goes to prison, or... He wins the election. He doesn't go to prison. And is that for life? That he gets to be president? Will we keep having more elections? Okay, pause. Hey, there's an option number three. Uh, Let's say he doesn't win the election and also doesn't go to prison. See the half-truth? Assuming guilt. Yeah. Assuming guilt. This is someone who doesn't believe in due process. Mm -hmm. Right. You're innocent until proven guilty. And if the past is any uh, accurate or reliable indicator of the future... uh, they call him Teflon Don for a reason. So her binary choice, that's the one area where she accepts the binary, I guess. Also computer coding, <laughs> 00110. But it's yeah, option number one, he wins and he doesn't go to prison. Or option number two, he loses and he goes to prison. That's not an assumed fact. You're trying to say the only way he gets out of being convicted is if he somehow steals an election. That's what you're trying to imply. It's just, it's, it's not accurate. Well, and he, she's also assuming that he's going to stay in power forever. Why? Okay, so he, he was well, she, already... She's trying to scare you. No, no, no. But, but he was already... He had that opportunity. He right. was in power. He thought an election was stolen. And we did have a peaceful it, transition she's, this of power. Is, no, I don't this understand is, where this is if coming If you from. listen to what she says, if you watch, watch how she finishes this. Because what she's it. equating Trump voters to are terrorists. Well, let's, let's let her... And then let's, let's continue watching um, more, the young man. Watch. Stupid stuff. No. If every election is a new opportunity for him to go to prison, do you think he allows us to have new elections? I mean, if those are the stakes, if winning the election is his plan... Hold on a second, pause. Hold on a second. If the stakes are every single time someone you don't like wins a presidency and once they're out of office, you indict them, the rules have changed! Just to be clear, this is unprecedented, certainly for the kind of bullshit that's been going on. And I don't know if you know this, but what Barack Obama did to the Donald Trump campaign makes Watergate look like child's play. I'm talking about the analogy here, not not, not the film. That's terrifying. (laughs) He killed a teacher with a ruler. Continue. Prison, what happens in that election if and when he does not win it? Does that kind of an election end with a graceful concession to a fair and square re-elected President Biden? Already has. Pause. Does it end with you spying on your opponent's campaign as Barack Obama did? Let's do a whole segment, by the way, on Barack. I feel like people gloss over that. It's yeah. not a conspiracy. Barack Obama was spying. on. I'm not talking about Russia collusion, just to be clear. I'm talking about Barack Obama. They were spying on the incoming president, Donald Trump, on his campaign. For crying out, Nixon didn't even know what happened with Watergate. It's the fact that afterwards he tried to cover it up for right. for political uh, for, for political reasons because he didn't want to be the. You know what Nixon said when he found out about Watergate being bugged? You can listen to the phone call because he was also silly enough to record himself because he thought <laughs> full transparency. I want this for the historical record. I, I believe his exact words are when he's told about they bugged the Watergate. He, he goes, well, "Who's the jackass who cleared that?" Yep. Whereas it came directly from Obama. So let's talk about leaving gracefully. Or do you mean like the Clintons? who literally removed the W's from every keyboard in the White House when George W. Bush came in. Well, that's kind of funny. It is kind of funny, (laughs) but the idea that it's graceful? (laughs) All right, let's continue. I mean, if Trump and his supporters see the stakes as losing and going to prison or winning and being president and probably (laughs) president for life, how should we expect that he and the Republican Party and Republican officials in swing states are going to handle the conduct of that election that Trump may very well lose. And because we are prone to forget, we have to say out loud Biden is. I mean, that we would be remiss, we would be willfully naive 
to ask that question as if our politics exists in a vacuum somewhere outside the rest of our news. Find your words. As if the politics pages are totally different than the crime pages, right? As if we are not in a moment where far-right politics is coincident with far-right violence, oh, with word. regular shows of force from paramilitary extreme right groups, and with acts of violence by people who are explicitly and admittedly motivated by far-right eliminationist political All right, hold on a second. Ideas. Pause this what? really quickly. So there you go. Well, pa- was that the end of it, I guess? Yes. yes. Nice. Okay, that's the end. Well, hold on a second. Let's go through this while you talk about... Par- and I'm going by rote here. Again, you guys kind of see that's like... I don't really have a, a, a prompt or what I have is a map that tells me which clips we're about to run. Going by rote, Black Lives Matter protest. Last count we saw was $2 billion, but that was within the year of yeah, damage. Damage is done. Uh, thousands of, of uh, casualties between officers and people, not to mention how many deaths uh, and entire towns and economies destroyed, right? Now, we know you're saying, hold on a second. I don't know if Black Lives Matter, Inc., would count as an organization considering that actual organization funds, which by the way is a 501c3 registered publicly, just to be clear, use those funds to buy multi-million dollar houses, I think that would qualify as an organization. Let's combine that with Antifa. You're looking at thousands of casualties and that billions of dollars in damages. Name me one, one right-wing paramilitary group that has inflicted that kind of damage on the American public. You know what? On the black community itself. One, your turn, go. I'm not gonna, not gonna give you your cheat sheet because I already know the answer. And this, this, if you listen to what she's not saying at the end of that, when you say that, what you're really saying is that, hey, anybody who votes for Donald Trump, yeah. whether they're a Republican official or they're a voter, is an extreme far-right mm-hmm. terrorist. Yep. So what does that imply? What that implies is it would be, it is, uh, it is prudent and it would be yep. advisable to actually arrest, shoot, and silence all of those people. So she's she is she is calling anyone who supports anybody she disagrees with in this case Trump uh, a far right yeah. violent extremist. That is what she's saying. I will say this: every single member. By the way, every when they say, "Oh, hold on a second, there's far right and there's far left," and I'm a centrist, I take it on an issue by issue basis. Every single member of the DNC on a national level, every single one, and Rachel Maddow and every single host at MSNBC is actively involved in supporting. Violence is a matter of policy. Correct. Just with the one. Correct. Correct. Castrating chemically children or puberty blockers. That's violence. Yes. Yep. You are committing violence against children. Yep. You are already more of an extremist. No, it is not ext- it is not an extremist point of view to respond with, I don't want my son on, I don't want a teacher to be able yeah. to report me to CPS and take my children away if I don't put them on puberty blockers. Well, why is that? Are you an extremist? Because he's six. Mm. Yeah. How about partial birth abortion? Yep. That Any one of you want to stand up, put a limit on abortion. We're not even getting to, hey, wh- wh- how many war crimes has Donald Trump? Where's Code Pink? Donald Trump been drafted a, up for? A z- uh, zero? Yeah. yeah what, zero. We're talking about violence. Mm-hmm. In that very same speech, here's the funny thing, which is he won't relinquish power. Let's go back to January 6th. He said, march on Washington, make your voices heard peacefully, peacefully and patriotically. If he's a dictator, you think we'd be having a debate about whether Mike Pence had the authority to certify the election? It would be irrelevant because he'd walk, he'd just ride in in a panzer. By the way, Rachel Maddow went on to explain <laughs> more about this or try and sort of, I guess, reconcile her position with her inconsistencies. But unfortunately, she was kidnapped and used as bait for Batman. So she has she has a full schedule. <laughs> <laughs> she makes a good Robin. She does. I like that you used a panzer. That's a that's a World it War is. II, a yeah, German World War II uh, tank reference. Well, well, well look, done, well done. Mine. President Trump's a Renaissance man. I did not know. Yes. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> is this a half track. And by the way, this is uh, not the first time that the left has uh, tried to insinuate that Donald Trump would be a dictator. It's a catchy tune. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it is. <laughs> that, I love how that actually supposes that Donald Trump will never age and live forever. And by the way, I was assured that we would not be on this planet anymore because climate change would have taken us out far before we would ever get to 21 anything. How right? dare you? I, so this is this is the stupidity of her argument right now. Brian, you made a great point. Because I double she is, dog dare you. 
How dare you? I hate all of you. Okay. Go on. He's talking about my great point. Well, hold on a second. Let me set this up first. We're going <laughs> to compare. No, hold on, because I want you to finish, but just okay. so you're, you guys uh, and girls and Zs watching, we are going to compare actual dictator moments of former Vice President Joe Biden to Donald Trump, but continue. Exactly. Uh, Brian, you had an okay point. Ah, um, <laughs> great. It's been downgraded. <laughs> it has been Thanks, downgraded. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Your point has made landfall. Yeah. Um, so basically, it, he is saying that you're othering somebody and you're basically saying that they are the threat to democracy they're going to steal this country let's look at the policies that we are actually trying to get put into place make sure that the elections are secure we think that something fishy happened last time we didn't overthrow them we tried to use every legal means possible to address the situation we even did a a, a fully peaceful transfer of power even after we thought that the elections were stolen and you guys didn't do anything about it yeah. and Thoughts. now all we're <laughs> saying i'm just i'm trying to call give, it a hunch i'm trying to give them a little bit absentee there, right? ballots all anybody we're saying, all we're saying is hey for us to have a functioning d- democratic process of electing a president <laughs> You have to make sure that the elections are secure. That's all we're asking for. Okay, that Pol Pot. Seen, but that is exactly that is seen as violent and far right to make sure. Well, we have first thing elections. you're asking for voter ID. Next thing you're demanding your citizens clang pots and pans so they kill all the sparrows who are destroying their crops. Well, that's not a bad <laughs> idea. Sometimes the grackles. But I hate the, the grackles. The architecture. The architecture. Rachel Maddow is pro- pro- providing the architecture for tyranny. Yes. Exactly. When she says something like that, the next step is if if she's saying that people are trying that will use violence to keep Donald Trump in for life. So yeah. what do you do about that? Well, you've got to get the army. Well, involved. remember the old philosophy, right? The exercise we would have, and I know this, I took humanities 101 in college, whereas would you go back in time and kill baby Hitler? Well, that's not even an issue now because they're saying Hitler is there now. Donald Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump is Hitler. That's right. They don't go back in time and kill baby Hitler. You're telling people kill currently existing Hitler. That's, but yeah, that's true. Let's compare this with what I would argue and you guys can add to this if you want. It's an interactive experience. That's why old media is uh, is dead. Uh, some dictator moments. Dictator moment number one from former Vice President Joe Biden. Um, completely ignoring the Constitution. Mm-hmm. And let me give you some examples. All references available at ladderscutter.com. The rent moratorium. Remember that? On August in 2021, the Supreme Court ended that CDC federal eviction moratorium. But the Supreme Court said, no, nah, I can't do that. Uh-huh. What did Biden do? Former Vice President Biden? He just said... I'm going to do it. Here's a clip. By the time it gets litigated, it will probably give some additional time while we're getting that $45 billion out to people who are, in fact, behind in the rent. Now, here's the thing. That would still be pretty bad if it was the (laughs) end of it. But the Supreme Court in November of that year said, "Uh, absolutely not. Your extension is completely unconstitutional. They went they they made sure to say, no, no, we really want people to know that you are violating the Constitution here. He knew it. One hundred percent. He knew it. He just said so. Exactly. The CDC's thing expired. They said you can't do this. And the federal government, Joe Biden said, you know, what? we're going to do it. I know that this is unconstitutional. But right between now and when the court can actually hear the case, we'll give away a bunch of free money. Huh? Yeah. How is that not authoritarian? Well, here's the thing. If it was the only example we had, you know, maybe it was senile, old, demented circus monkey. As long as it's not your money, it's fine. Well, yeah, it is exactly. our money. <laughs> and I need it now. <laughs> so a uh, student loan forgiveness, very similar example, but this was in uh, 2023, I believe. So yeah. you have June 2023, the this Supreme year. Court ruled that Biden could not just unilaterally forgive student loans. Can't and do. by the way, unilaterally forgive student loans, just to be clear, that means take your money uh-huh. and give it to someone getting a master's in gender studies. Just to be clear. It's, by the way, the single biggest government mandated transfer of wealth that would ever exist in this country. Why? Because the people who would be receiving these loans are largely upper middle class white people. We did a whole segment on it. You can just search through our archive. So the Supreme Court said, absolutely not. You can't do that. And what did former Vice President Biden say? Yeah, I can do it. The Biden administration says more than 800,000 student loan borrowers will have their remaining federal student loans forgiven over the next several weeks. Today's announcement will impact $39 billion in student debt, according to the Department of Education. This will be automatic forgiveness and borrowers will be notified. It kicks off the president's new student debt relief program called SAVE, which will lower monthly federal debt payments based on factors like income, family size, in some cases reducing monthly payments to zero. Yeah, just reduce them. Well, no, that's not loan forgiveness. It's just reducing your payments to, to zero. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, oh, I'd love to do that when I go into a, That's my, wrapping a bad idea in a pretty package. It really is. Going I to like your bank zero. for a mortgage. Well, look, yeah. we think we can do this as a percent on financing. Yeah, okay, but let's talk about the payments. How do you feel here at Chase about 
Yeah, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this, uh, this this loan on the house. Yeah, yeah. I know you're saying, you know, uh, $2,400. I'm a zero guy myself. Or a zero guy, yeah. 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 I, want you, I want you to take that check, add a bunch of zeros, and take off anything else. <laughs> Free money. <laughs> so here's a, another dictator moment from former Vice President Joe Biden. This is a big one. Uh, hey, my body, my choice. What about the vaccine mandates? You know what? That's giving it too much credit. The mRNA injection. Experimental. Mandates. Yes. The mRNA experimental injection mandates. Yeah. August 2021, right? The military uh, mandated COVID vaccine for any of the service members. Okay. Now, I know you're saying military, that's government. But hold on a second. This really, they don't have the right to tell you what you can do. Uh, what you can put into your body in every other facet. They can bar you, for example, from service or certain if you're taking drugs. This is not something that's typical to say you have to take an experimental mRNA injection. It's not the same as a standard vaccine. That's why I don't want to use the term vaccine. So the military mandated it. Then in January 19th, 2023, the mandate was rescinded. Oh. Yeah. Because over 17,000 service members refused the vaccine. The good news is at that point, the people who stayed were the LGBTQ soldiers, or as we call them, super soldiers. <laughs> the front line. <laughs> there were 83 front, the front, those at the front hole. Uh. <laughs> 8,300 were discharged. Then in November 2021, the Biden, administrated, uh, Biden administration mandated a bunch of COVID regulations. Any firms with 100 employees all had to be vaccinated, I believe, by January 1st, 2022. Was that the policy? January 4th, 2022. Yep. January 4th, 2022. The holidays. Yeah. <laughs> all healthcare workers at facilities receiving government payment had to have their workers vaccinated. So now we've gone beyond, okay, you work for the government, right? This is what people do with freedom of speech. Well, if freedom of speech just means that the government can't tell you what you can and can't do. They go, well, the mandate doesn't apply. That just means if you want to work for the government. Then they go, well, it just means it applies if you want to work for any company that receives any money from the government. And then it goes, well, it really only applies if you work for any company who receives any kind of tax break that every single company would need to be competitive, including mom and pop businesses. And then it's, well, look, everyone else has been mandated at this point. Why are you special? That's how it happened. So all of the healthcare workers at these facilities, right, who are receiving any type of government aid, subsidies, uh, relief, which, of course, at that point in time, think a lot of people were because they had been shut down. Pretty much everyone. Sorry. This is this is pretty much everybody being involved. Yeah. In this. And then you're saying, well, it's consequent. Well, thousands of healthcare workers quit or were yeah. fired. Oh, thousands man. and thousands and thousands. I wonder and thousands. how that affected uh, a care. By the way, I just want to make sure you understand the timeline here. So August 2021 is 16 months after the outbreak of the uh, pandemic. We knew a heck of a lot by then. Uh, January 4th, 2022 is almost a year, uh, a little bit over a year and a half, a year and eight months after this. And you're telling me that people still had to be vaccinated, even though we understood that the vaccine, by that time, we understood this stuff without a doubt, that the vaccine didn't stop transmission, that the efficacy rate was actually actually dropping down into the single digits and Johnson and Johnson was looking for somebody to fire over their vaccine that probably actually hurt a whole lot of people and made them die. I don't know. Ooh. Maybe hit the YouTube dump button on that one yeah. because that one's a that's a big claim. Yeah. It's maybe a lot of people had problems with Johnson and Johnson. Can I just say that? Actually, I think the Johnson and Johnson ended up doing better than a lot. Well, of no, there was a lot of like famous pl people Black people, I'm not kidding. Famous black people that took it. Why died. would you be kidding about black people? They're no, black there, people there, were, there, there were there were the Johnson Johnson vaccine did have some. They were, they were kind of yeah, like people United were States told to take Pfizer it off of the list of vaccines that yes. they recommended. Now because because the reaction was was stronger. I think. yes, some yeah. big issue yeah. with it. I got the fake one. I'm just None saying of them were very we knew good. all of this while they were doing that, while they were yeah. forcing people out of military careers, forcing nurses out of hospitals, forcing employees out of their jobs. Okay, they knew speaking that. of military, okay, we'll move on here to dictator moment number three from former Vice President Biden. While they're talking about Donald Trump weaponizing, right, the government, uh, this guy... Former Vice President Biden, and by the way, so did Barack Obama, just to be clear. Uh, Barack Obama, current president, um, <laughs> weaponized the Justice Department against all political rivals. Right? So let's just go through Trump, obviously. The DOJ filed a bunch of federal charges yeah. against Donald Trump. Four indictments, right? He's facing 91 charges. That's what we're up to now. 712 years. And the six months. Oh, in prison. Months. And the theoretic, yeah, in the six months. And the theoretic and death months. penalty, just to be clear, it's that that's kind treason. of existing out there. Yeah, for yeah. treason. <laughs> I mean... I mean, Carla Homolka got less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, again, is, is the law treated equally? Well, Hunter Biden was treated, of course, with kid gloves. This is a guy who not only evaded taxes. This is a guy who obviously violated firearms laws. This is a guy who committed, I mean, as long of a list of drug felonies as you can think up, and then some that you wouldn't even imagine. You can tack that on the list yeah. anyway, not to mention the kind of money laundering and, and, and deal. That's why, of course, he was... But at least he gave his four-year-old two of his original paintings. Yes. Oh, yes so you got to be a little bit fair. 
And he gave his uh, his mean, niece two of his original nude photographs. Oh, this is, yes, but they're tasteful nudes. He was posing on a log. Yes, exactly. With good shadow. Unfortunately, it was a cheese log, so I don't know. It's just uh, it doesn't yeah. seem sanitary. <laughs> it's called cholesterol. Um, January 6th. Let's look at the January 6th <clears throat> protesters, right? Yeah. Prisoners. Yeah. Put in those conditions. For, think about this. The QAnon shaman. I know you guys like to laugh. Like, oh, it's silly. He painted his face. Yeah. So does everyone who goes to, or every super fan of a college football That's team, true. to be clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy Irish. said, let's be peaceful. This guy was put in, this guy was put in prison for a long time. The ACLU said prolonged solitary confinement is torture and certainly should not be used as a punitive tool to intimidate or extract cooperation. That's the ACLU. And do you know who agrees that weaponizing the DOJ is bad? Mr. Rachel Maddow. I don't know what I expected to hear from outgoing Obama administration officials, but the answer that I got surprised me. The answer that I got was that the worst case scenario they could imagine was that the president, the incoming president, that'd be Trump, Donald Trump, (laughs) would use the Justice Department as a weapon, that that is the single most dangerous thing that a president could do to the country on his own say so. The awesome power of federal criminal prosecution and federal criminal investigation should be seen as essentially a domestic nuclear bomb from an ill-intentioned president. Hey, you know what else I would toss in with the DOJ or our intelligence community? Let's wrap it all up into one shitty sack. Um, I can't remember, was it the FBI or DOJ? Probably both telling Twitter and Facebook yeah. that you better F- remove the New York Post FBI. story on Hunter Biden. Yeah, it was FBI. FBI. Yep. FBI, It's again, they kind of all run together. I mean, how many people with pedophile pornography on their computers can you fit in a room? They said, hey, you better remove this story, which would have changed the outcome of the election, yep. even though that they knew, they knew it was true at the same time. Same thing when they invaded James O'Keefe's house, trying to claim that the Ashley Biden diary was stolen and they wouldn't confirm it. They did the same thing with the laptop when they raided. Uh, actually, they did the opposite with Giuliani. They raided his apartment <laughs> and took everything but the Hunter Biden laptop. Right, which they already had in their possession at the time. Another one of them. Yes. They knew about it. Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.